In this video, I am finally back outside in my backyard taking pictures of deep space again. I've made a huge change to the telescope setup that I typically use, and if you've seen some of my more recent videos, I'm sure you know exactly what's coming. It can hold a massive 44 pounds of telescope gear. It's one of the most well-known and reliable astrophotography mounts you can buy, and most importantly, it's in that familiar Skywatcher white and green. That's right, the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro is finally here. After going so many months without having a working setup in the backyard, it feels so good to be finally back. Getting this mount was the biggest change that I made to my telescope since the last time I was out here making videos in February, but I've made some other less obvious changes that I'll also dive into in this video. So as I take you along with me tonight for my first ever clear night with the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro, I'll give you guys some tips and insight into how I make my astrophotography routine as stress-free and simple as possible. So if you've watched any other astrophotography videos in the past six years, or even just taken a look at some forums online, there's a very, very likely chance you've heard of this mount. The Skywatcher EQ6R Pro has proven to be one of the most well-built and reliable mounts ever made, and even six years after release, it's still holding up just fine. As most of you probably know, the predecessor to this mount in the backyard was not known for its reliability and durability like this one is. Although my old Skywatcher EQM35 Pro didn't hold the greatest reputation in the astrophotography community, it will forever hold a special place in my heart as the piece of equipment that brought me from kneeling down on my driveway looking at the moons of Jupiter to photographing Bodhi's galaxy in my backyard. And if you're unaware as to why I switched and bought a new mount, as of a few months ago, after almost five full years of use, my EQM35 Pro decided to throw in the towel. The declination motor on that mount was completely fried, and it was at that point when I realized I I think I needed to upgrade my mount. So that's where the big guy comes in. I'm hoping that the EQ6R Pro will be somewhat of a permanent solution to a lot of the old problems I used to have in astrophotography, as the vast majority of the issues I had with my setup was from that EQM35 Pro. And I think a comment from Midnight Astro on one of my most recent videos pretty much sums up what I want out of this EQ6R. I'm hoping that this mount will let me get back to enjoying every moment of this hobby, rather than spending every night hassling around fixing problems. In the comments section, Section of the video I made where I announced the purchase of this mount, a lot of you had questions for me as to why I didn't go for a newer mount, specifically one with a strain wave design like ZWO's AM5. I went for the EQ6R specifically for its robust bulletproof design. I want a mount that can take a couple wind gusts. It's not going anywhere in my yard, I'm not traveling with it anytime soon at least, so it's going to be staying in the same spot for a long time, so I want something that's nice and sturdy. And it doesn't hurt that this has been my dream piece of equipment since 2019. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm hoping that this new astrophotography mount will be able to solve a lot of my problems and improve my overall relationship with astrophotography by reducing a lot of frustrations. And as this video progresses and the night goes on, I will give you guys some more tips as to how to make your astrophotography lives a little bit easier as well. So come along as I take you with me for my first ever night of imaging with the Skywatcher EQ6R Pro. So I feel like a lot of videos you see on the EQ6R Pro online are from people that are used to somewhat bigger equatorial mounts like the, um, you know, the HEQ5 or stuff like that. So they don't cover a lot of the little things that most people wouldn't think about. So I'll try and give you guys a little bit of a perspective on this mount from someone who's upgrading from one of Skywatcher's lower end equatorial mounts. So one of the features that I love about this that doesn't get talked about very much is that the counterweight shaft 
extends out from the mount head here. I was used to, you know, having to unscrew the counterweight shaft from the mount head every time I wanted to pack it up and get it in there. So that's just one thing I wanted to mention to some of you who are thinking about upgrading to this mount. Ooh, check this unique sunset out. We got like a glow happening in there. If you're familiar with this channel, you know that I can't click on an astro vlog without getting me talking about the environment I'm shooting in. So it's a pretty cool sunset tonight. And look at these clouds too. They're like golden. So what is the actual target that I'm going after tonight? What will I be shooting as my first object with the new mount? Well, I had to pick something that was bright that I could complete in one night, and I had to pick an object that was near and dear to me. It had to be something that I photographed for the first time with new gear before. So with very little hesitation, I have decided that tonight I am going after the Crescent Nebula. For those that might be unaware, the Crescent Nebula is a hydrogen alpha emission nebula in the constellation Cygnus. It is one of the most iconic nebulae in the night sky, especially in the summertime. It's right in that area with the North American Nebula and the Veil Nebula and the Seder region. Everything in there is super, super symbolic to summer astrophotography from the Northern Hemisphere. And the Crescent lies smack dab in the middle of it all. The image I got last year with this same camera and telescope was an image that I was really proud of. And I really, really hope to exaggerate a lot of those details and bring out some more of that O3 that blue structure within that crescent with some more data that I'll hopefully be able to capture tonight. If you're curious about more than just the telescope mount, the actual telescope and camera I'll be using is my Skywatcher EvoStar 72ED telescope with the ZWO ASI 533MC Pro. This is the brains of my setup. This is my mini PC with my Yosemite sticker on top. This is the Mealy Quieter 3Q. And then I have just a standard Orion 50mm auto guider guide scope with the ZWO ASI 120mm mini guide camera. If you're confused, or curious about why I have a second telescope on top of my main one and what I use it for, I have a video linked right here as to what auto guiding is and how you can use it to really benefit your astrophotography. In between the camera and the telescope here is my secret weapon, the Optolong L-Extreme light pollution filter. The moon is pretty bright, it's in the last quarter, so about 50% illuminated, but even still, that plus the Bortle 9 skies makes for really difficult imaging. So this filter will be able to to cut out almost all of that moonlight and all of that light pollution to reveal the crescent nebula hidden underneath. It is almost go time. Those clouds are losing color as we speak. The sun is officially well below the horizon and it is getting darker by the minute. I am so, so excited. Another perk of upgrading from one Skywatcher SIN scan mount to another is everything stays the same with your software. All the drivers should be the same. Your software will connect to it just fine. I know mine did and I just use a USB USB type B cable with ASCOM. So it was really, really simple getting it set up for the first time. I just plugged everything in and made sure everything was registered and we were good to go. But yeah, there's nothing really left to do besides string all the cables together and wait until it gets dark. The mount's roughly polar aligned now. I set my latitude and pointed it roughly north with the compass app on my phone. And then once it gets dark enough to see all the stars, I will focus the camera and use Nina's three point polar alignment feature, which basically allows me to polar align my mount without having to be able to see Polaris from my backyard. Since there's a huge tree blocking my whole view to the north, I have to use that three-point polar alignment feature to get my mount working properly. And with these high-level equatorial mounts, you want to make sure that you are polar aligned very carefully. That actually brings me to my first tip for you guys, which is don't skip the fundamentals. What I mean by that is leveling your mount, balancing your mount, and polar aligning your mount. The process of polar aligning and balancing 
balancing and leveling actually doesn't take that long if you do it correctly. It's tedious, don't get me wrong, but in the grand scheme of things, if you spend an extra five minutes really nailing everything about setting up your gear, the whole rest of the night will be so much easier and you'll actually benefit from it in terms of time. Specifically in the balance department, with my EQM35, the declination axis on my mount, which means this axis actually wasn't able to be balanced properly when holding this telescope. I would be able to move it as far up as I could and get as balanced as possible, but it wasn't fully balanced. With this scope, I made absolutely sure that nothing moves. If you nudge it in each direction, it moves about the same amount, and you go to the other side too, and you make sure that everything is still balanced. Same thing with the RA axis, obviously. You unhook this here, and you just make sure that no matter what direction you nudge it in, it moves the about same, and it's not tilting in any way. And once that is really, really nailed, if your mount is really level, you should have some really good guiding. A lot of problems I had when starting up my telescope was that I would rush the setup and get straight into taking pictures and then I would wonder why my images weren't coming out right and I blamed it on software and hardware and everything except for myself. When in reality I wasn't really aligning the mount pretty well, it wasn't balanced and it wasn't leveled. So yeah, as the sun continues to set and it starts getting darker and darker, uh, I'll come back outside and really get everything set up and aligned and focused. Uh, but for now, I'm gonna head inside and grab a snack and, uh, and really prepare for everything. I absolutely cannot wait. It is, what, about 8.30 right now, so probably an hour until we can start imaging. Okay, so I have focused my telescope and polar aligned everything and slewed to the Crescent Nebula. And the first impressions with my Skywatcher EQ6R Pro is that it is the exact same as my EQM35, except all my problems are fixed. There were some problems that I didn't even know I had. Quirks about the EQM35 that you just kind of get used to when you have it for so long. Things as in it taking six plate solves to actually get on your target. I was shocked when the EQ6R only needed one little plate solve to get bang onto the Crescent Nebula. Not having to recalibrate PHD2. The EQM sometimes has enough backlash where it can't get the certain right amount of steps in the south direction. So when the EQ6R did that perfectly for the first time, I was so surprised. So everything about this mount is exactly how I wanted it to be and how I hoped. Even though it doesn't look like it in the background there, it is about 10:15 p.m., which means it is fully dark, so I am fully ready to get set up and imaging the Crescent Nebula. But before I get going, I have another tip for you guys. I like to use the ratio of 75% planning, 25% acting. And what that means is you put 75% of your time and effort into planning your night and planning your astrophotography setup. And then 25% of that time and effort actually goes into acting it out. I feel like a lot of us just sort of jump into astrophotography and immediately you just want to get going and then you work really hard when you're out there but since you didn't set yourself up for success, it doesn't go as planned. So a lot of astrophotography is behind the computer planning what targets you want to shoot, what gear would be best for that target, what do I need to get to make sure that I'm set up for success, and that is 75% of the time. So I'm going to start my sub-exposures of the Crescent Nebula, so I'm going to start my plan for a bunch of three-minute exposures on the Crescent Nebula now. This is a very still night. There are very little cars on the highway near me. There's not a cloud in sight. The wind completely died down. There is nothing out here. It is so, so good to be back. I haven't really been out imaging where I've actually been able to experience it in 
forever, so long. The mount works perfectly. Uh, it's been guiding and taking three minute subs for about a half an hour now. They look amazing. The ease of use that a good astrophotography mount gets you is well worth the price. This mount was worth every penny I spent on it. And I hope that you guys are able to have this same experience with your gear. But anyways, I have three more tips to end the video off. Tip number one is to purchase a quality telescope cover. Especially if you have a heavy mount like this one, a good telescope cover where you can just cover it during the day and then uncover it and use it at night is so valuable. The cover I use is the Telegizmos 365 cover. It keeps it warm at a good temperature and it shields it from the weather. Obviously, if there's gonna be a severe thunderstorm or a particularly windy or rainy storm, then you you want to bring it in but it's definitely useful from shielding it from the sun and the cold another thing and this might be counterintuitive you should sleep if you're having a night where just things aren't going well it is not worth staying up longer when things just aren't working typically you're gonna have nights where things just don't go your way and in my experience the best thing to do is to just call it a night and try it again next time I promise you there will be more clear nights and even if you miss every single opportunity to photograph the object you want this year it'll be back around at the same time next year. And the very final piece of advice I have for you guys is to know your limits. And what I mean by this is go after targets that you know will set you up for success. I have a wide field refractor with a dedicated astronomy camera and I'm in a Bortle 9 zone. So I know that good targets for me would be bright big emission nebulae. But if you live in a nice dark area with a huge telescope with a long focal length, galaxies would be better for you because they are really small and they are broadband targets. I am typically not one to say that things aren't possible, but I just don't want you guys trying to do things that will just end up making you frustrated. But at the end of the day, who am I to tell you what to do? You get to make your own choices and choose how you want to experience astrophotography, and that's the beauty of this hobby. So take what I say and what others say with a grain of salt, and if you think a different path is better for you, then go for that. As long as you're enjoying what you're doing and what you're making in this hobby, then that's all that matters. I hope you enjoyed this video as you came along with me and watched me experience the power of the EQ6R Pro for the first time. And I can't wait to see what this mount is able to help me do in the future. And with that being said, I hope that my final image of the Crescent Nebula inspires you to go out and shoot some deep sky astrophotography pictures on your own. Clear skies.